thank you once again for staying with us. You're still watching NTV Weekend Edition on Talk of the Nation tonight. We speak tourism. We did see that last year's lockdown was particularly hard on the tourism sector. Uh, and this year, there was a conscious effort to save the blow to the sector. But was it enough? Now, with partial lifting of the lockdown, we ask if there is anything else the government or the country can do to improve the standing of the tourism sector. To help us answer these questions, once again, is the exe Chief Executive Officer of Great Lakes safaris and a major champion of the sector, Amos Wekesa. A very good evening and welcome to NTV Talk of the Nation. Good evening and thank you so much for inviting me tonight. The economy has been really opened up. How are we doing when we speak tourism? Are we doing better? Are we performing better? Well, in the wider scope of things, uh, we should be able to see probably things start to, to improve. But uh, the reality is that Uganda right now, I think, as we have discussed before, is still on the red list in the UK. UK is Uganda's number one source market worldwide in terms of uh, the adventure tourism, which brings in more money to the economy. Um, we expected that this week, uh, Kenya moves from the lead list, goes to the amber list. Amber list allows you to travel. Now, if anybody from the UK, for example, now, wants to come to Uganda, if you go back, you're supposed to pay £1,750. From this week, they've put it up to £2,200 if you came by mistake to Uganda and, and you want to go back to your country. So they're restricting. No one is coming from our biggest source market uh, for tourism into the country. Then, of course, during this time, we also had a bit of a challenge. Uh, there was a condition by government that you need to have paid for your visa before you arrive in Entebbe. But there have been challenges of of tourists, for example, from America who are allowed to travel, or German or, or, or Netherlands, to come and apply into the system and get their visas on time. This, that's also another big challenge that we're, we're facing right now uh, as a country. So sometimes we put conditions, but we do not understand that the systems don't actually match what exactly uh, it's all about. The reality is that the industry has had 17 months of big, big trouble. I can tell you as a player, it's only in June. I don't understand why. It's the only month that I was able to earn enough money to look after the business from the earnings. But otherwise, we've been looking after the business for the last 17, 16 months using a bit of the savings. Now, people that don't have savings, I didn't have a bit of savings, are in trouble. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that government of Uganda came up and said, OK, we're going to give the hotel sector, for example, or tourism generally, um, a relief, which was going to be about you, you borrow at, from uh, UDB at 12%. And then I think you, European Union was supposed to put in some money such that the interest rate goes to 8%. It's been a year. No single person has gotten any single shilling. As we speak right now, most of the you know, hotels are actually on the verge of closing. They have no business. They have loans to pay. They have staff to pay. And then, of course, the other challenge we also have now is that if I already have staff as, as Great Lakes Safaris or Uganda Lodges, I'm paying them every month. And I'm trying to find sources to pay my staff. But when I pay staff, I still have to, have to pay statutory fees. I have to pay pay. I still have to pay NSSF on money that I'm not earning. Mm -hmm. So it is making the industry extremely difficult to run in the short run and the medium term. You, you, you point out uh, there's so many challenges that we currently have as the tourism sector and as a country. Mm -hmm. And we've come to see, at least if we are to look at the last one week, I mean, the country has been receiving good news. Yeah. As a country, how can we exploit that to benefit our tourism sector? Is there a way we can have a link of how our sportsmen are performing vis-a-vis -vis the tourism sector to boost it? You know what? In the UK, tourism and culture, which is sports in many ways, are in the same docket. Yes. Tourism in the UK, and I'd like to give you this example. Tourism and sports. When we shout Arsenal, we shout Man U. We're giving, cranes. <laughs> yeah, we're giving value to the UK. Okay. They make over $130 billion from this shouting of Arsenal, whatever. So as a year. country also, we should be promoting, let's like, say, Uganda cranes Absolutely. or sportsmen and making a lot of noise on that. Absolutely. And we must con congratulate our team, the Olympics team. They've done a fantastic name, fantastic, given us a fantastic name. The reality was just hearing Rob Walker talking about how beautiful Uganda was, the most beautiful country in the world, mm. you know, and most the way friendly we greet, people. For instance. And the way we greet, yes. this reached millions of people. Mm. And then the other thing that is key, if I was a politician, which I'm not, I would now tap into this because it brought in a lot of unity among Ugandans. Even on social media, you could see there was no opposition and there was no government individual. They're all Ugandans. 
if I was government, I would now put money into marketing the country, into making sure sports works. Let me assure you that if you go to a 10, have you heard of a 10, Eldoret? Yes. People like Morafa come to Kenya, come with 20 runners. They go to Eldoret. Now we should make capture a place where runners from the world come to spend money in. America alone has got 21 million marathoners. If you went to America and said, we have our Capturra boys, you can come and train with them. It's $5,000 for you to have a package of two weeks of running with guys in Bay, And you bring 1 million people. Okay, let me, let's, let's say 1 million people. Let's say even 50,000 people. Do you know how much money will be earned in the country? How much money will, will be earned in Capturra and among the Sebei people? It will, you would not believe how much it will be. But I think we're not business people. And probably that's the reason why people concentrate on borrowing money as opposed to looking at areas which can actually bring us resources and invest towards that. Well, now speak to us about some in your sector that are saying the government needs to do a lot in terms of investing in, in it. Recently, we did see the president promising a 200 billion uh, shillings uh, relief sort of uh, support to the SMEs. In a way, do you think this is going to benefit the sector? or it's not likely to come to you? Because the hotel owners, for instance, do fall under the SMEs. How is that going to work out? Uh, well, right now, the thing is that if we have not gotten the support that we're supposed to have gotten, Initially. especially the, the hotels, you know, for the last one year that they've been telling us, we, you know, we met means of finance so many times. We engaged with means of finance, told them, you know what, there are no incomes, people have borrowed against hotels, building. Why can't we get some kind of relief? If one year... Over one year, we have not gotten it. I don't, know, I don't think it's going to work that way. Personally, I believe that the number one thing that we need to do is to continue with the momentum that has just happened this week. How can we get Uganda on international TVs? How can we tell the world Uganda is ready to do business? How can we do things that are good, that can be... We need to invest money. We need to invest millions of dollars just to make sure we tell the world the best pineapple in the world is here, the best weather is here, the, you know, the source of the longest river is in this country. We need to spend money towards that. Bad news, they give us free space. But when it comes to good news, we're not going to sell ourselves for business as a country. Now, I want to believe we have different stakeholders watching us tonight. Yeah. And you keep on talking about how we can exploit the moments we've enjoyed this last week. Yeah. How do we do that? You're saying we spend in money, we put in money. How do we do that? Do we use social media? We just want you to break it down for us. How do we do that? Market our pineapples, you say. How do we do that? Uh, one thing that I've, I wasn't, I'm fairly around in social media quite a bit. Yes. And I was telling Ugandans we need to divide two things business uh, or Uganda from politics. When it, Uganda must come first, before any politician, it is important that I as Amos every week I showcase what is good about my country, about my business, about what I'm doing. I have that responsibility as a Ugandan, whether I'm on a position or government. But the other thing that we also need to do is make sure that there are resources, particularly p for position in the country, I've always talked about, you can find a telecom company in this country, uses six million dollars to tell us every year that they actually exist and they're selling airtime. What about selling a country? How do we make sure that pineapples, instead of going for, seven, for going for 500 shillings, how can we send the pineapples to Nigeria, which buys a, one pineapple at $7, such that the farmer here can get a dollar or two from, from pineapples? How do we position that? How do we position our beauty as a country? This is the kind of mindset. Don't you think that goes back to government policies on seeing that it is an aspect of promoting patriotism or something of the sort in every single sector? Is there a way government can work around coming up with policies that support that? Yeah, but you can't. You see, patriotism cannot be taught in class. Mm. Yesterday was a good example of what patriotism can do. Patriotism, if I feel that my country is performing well at international scene, naturally become patriotic. Or people like me, having been a tour guide, I didn't understand how beautiful this country was until I became a tour guide. I saw tourists leaving this country shedding tears and saying, how come it's a beautiful country and there are no tourists? How can such a beautiful country have poor people? How can the fertile souls, you know? Mm -hmm. It's when I started appreciating my country more. Then I traveled all the continents and I started understanding why the tourists leave this country thinking it's the most beautiful country they've been to, but at the same time wondering why we are poor. So it is that, that thinking. Unless things like those happen, we cannot go far. Mm -hmm. Now, as we conclude our conversation this evening, there is, we've seen the talks and calls for different people talking about local pricing, you know, the issue of a person goes to a certain place and either they are told to pay in dollars and then they go to another place they are told to pay in shillings and in some way some people they, uh, they sort of feel they're being separated or segregated whatever way they would want to put it what do you have to say about that when it gets to local pricing 
Uh, in the bigger picture, I've had uh, this discussion with ministers and some guys because of, on the, because of the Presidential Investors Roundtable. I've said there is no one that should come to this country and spend money in foreign currency. They should pay in shillings. Everyone should pay in shillings. If you go to South Africa, you will never p go to a shop and be able to pay for anything in South Africa in dollars. You Even Kenya here. Why? If I have come and I'm remaining with, if I want to, uh, to come to, to the country, chances are that I will exchange more money than I need to spend. So I've come with $2,000 into the country, and I will, I will most likely be able to change the $2,000 into shillings. I will be forced to spend that money more into the economy, and that's how the countries grow. Now, uh, when it comes to tourism, there are aspects that are in shillings. Just that some of us don't are not very keen in looking after these aspects. If you go to a national park, a foreigner pays $40 to enter for 24 hours. A Ugandan pays 15,000 shillings. So many of the aspects are still in shillings, but they will still have aspects in dollars. But if we change everything and change the rules and say if you're going to spend anything in this country, must be spent in shillings, mm -hmm. we're going to see the economy grow or right. improve. Is there hope for the tourism sector to actually get up? Absolutely, absolutely. We're looking forward to 2022. We're looking forward to 2023. Mm -hmm. The tourism industry is going to take between three to four years in order to recover fully. Mm -hmm. In this particular time, we need government to come in and intervene. But at the same time, we need a budget. I am hoping that the new PS of uh, f finance puts money towards marketing this country and making it good. I'm, sh I'm very hopeful about that. So I want to congratulate him uh, right. for that. Thank you so much, Amos Wekese, for joining us tonight on Talk of the Nation. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Great Lakes uh, Safaris, and he is a major champion of the tourism sector. Uh, there is hope for the tourism sector. Sooner or later, it will get back up. Thank you as well for joining us. You're still watching NTV Weekend Edition.